Welcome to Create a Block. We're your host, Jean. And V. We interview people in the animation industry about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. We asked people on Twitter if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. And today with us, we have Mike Rianda. Woo-hoo! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> You peaked your mic. Yeah, baby. That's what we're doing. <laughs> the the blue on the like audio filter is like blown out. It's just yeah, your I mean. microphone's sparking already. <laughs> you have strong Andy from Parks and Rec energy. I never told you that. I have. I I, don't, I also have. I've been told by audio engineers they're like, "Are you speaking through a megaphone? What's happening?" Um, because like, they're like, you're peaking and you're just speaking normally. And then when you scream, the microphone just, it's tough. Yeah. I, I have a bad, I think, uh, our editor has to deal with a lot of me yelling and then (laughs) I love it. It's exciting. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you. for coming on. I really like this show. So I'm excited. And I really like both you you guys. So what a a treat. Too sweet, too sweet. I, I realized that I too tried sweet. to hire uh, uh, Vi um, uh, on uh, our movie, but um, we couldn't because of uh, uh, yeah. issues. They were they were terrible. That's why. <laughs> and I work with Gene. Rejected. Jean. Yeah, I did a I did a short for you to get out you, the vote. You guys are the best. Year. So yeah, I'm it was, excited. Uh, it was a really fun experience. I'm glad it was. Fun. <laughs> and then and then Trump lost. I think it's because of us. Yeah, I do. I did. I, I did claim victory uh, to some people over text. Like the plan worked. For the plan. <laughs> I think it was us. I think we get we did it. It's a really cute short. Yeah, everybody should. Check Our it out. climate cartoon with 400 views yeah. took down. Took him down. We took him down. Well, you do what you can. Um, but yeah, Mike, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi. Uh, yes. My name is Mike Rianda. I am a cartoonist, and I uh, I was um, a creative director on Gravity Falls, and I'm now uh, the co-writer and director of The Mitchells vs. the Machines, coming out oh, yeah. April 30th, if you're listening to this. Get on Netflix now. What are you yeah. doing? Also, yes. <laughs> get like three devices on at the same time, wink, wink. I didn't say it. But I'm publicly saying it. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta you gotta get as many views as you can. Absa absa goddamn. Hey, some so, when we were trying to get uh, mon- this uh, podcast monetized, I would just like have it open in my other. <laughs> just like, I love like it. A, like a loop, just seeing how many hours I could clock. I don't give a I don't give a I, shit. I, I, well, because I recently uh, it, it's it's so, so as often ago as last year, I bought like. 30 tickets to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, like oh, really? hoping that it would make it a hit. <laughs> hey, that's that again. You know, it's those it was those tickets that uh, that made it a hit. Exactly. I have this vain idea of control. I think it's from animation that like maybe I could control every the expressions on maybe. people's faces. But I see a pattern. I see a pattern. You yeah. know, like yeah, this is going to become therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So you have a problem with control. No, I meant with the hits, you know, like Oh yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the ticket. Um but yeah, you've worked on all these amazing things. I actually we're watching Gravity Falls right now. Oh, cool. Well, I'm in the middle of a Gravity Fall. I found this old Gravity Falls box. And I yeah. was like happy to like I was happy that anyone cared because like when I was working on it, I was like I was like, one day I'll show the ending of this episode that I wrote and everyone will think it's great. <laughs> and it was like so <laughs> gratifying that anyone cared. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was huge. That's like the last cartoon that I think I like fully watched all the way through. And then I got jaded. <laughs> and, I, and now I have a hard time watching uh, anything that like comes out. It's uh, it, yeah, it's I think I do think when you work in animation, it's easy to be jaded. It, my it, wife won't yeah. watch anything animated with me. Yeah, it was like the last thing that I that was that was my last show that I got really into before I got into animation, and then I'm like, oh, I can't watch anything. I'm too, <laughs> I'm too critical. <laughs> You're too, uh, too close to it. I'm way too close to it. But anyway, let's take it back. Tell us about how you got your start. What got you interested in art and animation and all that jazz? Um, yeah, I, I it was actually interesting. I was just thinking about it. I because I found when I found, I've been looking through my apartment because I have downtime for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. And I found these old comic books that I used to do when I was 
eight or nine or something. And the very first thing that ever inspired me to do anything like that was uh, Jeff Smith's Bone. Oh, hell yeah. Because oh, yeah. I was like, oh, he's just a guy. Yeah. He He's yeah. he's just like a guy in his... He doesn't work for any company. Like, he made up that company, and now he's making it. Mm-hmm. So I made these, like, goofy cartoons, and I would... <laughs> without people's consent, I would send them my comics... <laughs> And I would be like, please read my comic. Um, uh, I don't know if you're interested, but um, just check it out. And I would send it to them every month. And then, like, it was totally, t- I was, like, rereading it. And it's it's sort of um inspired in its weirdness, but it's totally terrible. Like, who would you send your comics to? Like, uh, <laughs> like other creators or, like, uh, publishers or, like? <laughs> no, just, just my friends. <laughs> oh, well, that's not, you don't need consent for that. That's just, you're giving them a treat. Uh, Miles, I'm talking Miles Hansen from Monterey Park Elementary. We're talking Ryan Toddy. Um, all the favorites. Um, shout out. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got free entertainment, so they, they're the ones yeah. who benefit. Just sort of friends and family. My sister <laughs> who lived in San Francisco. Yeah. So I did that, and, and that was really exciting to me, but I didn't think that animation was anything that I would, ever want to do because oh you have to do a lot of drawing because i was under the impression that one person did every single drawing oh sure and i was like well that's not for me i don't want to work that hard um but then uh weirdly i read this i got really really into spumco and john k because i loved ren and stimpy growing up mm-hmm. and now it's a uh, nightmare <laughs> yeah yeah, we don't, not the same yeah it's not yeah exactly i mean it always had kind of like this i'm always kind of a dark energy but um oh yeah but i i, re- I really love you know those cartoons and those drawings and stuff and and i i joined this uh spumco chat room oh and and it's funny because one of the other guys is like also in the industry but we would like it was so cool because it's like we met people that were really in the industry and i was like oh my god this guy works in animation. I, I I can work in animation. And then like a couple of people were nice enough to like respond to my fan letters. Like I sent, I found Aaron Springer on ICQ. Uh, oh, which, wow. Uh, dates me 37 years old, but uh, I found him on ICQ and he, it was so nice. And he answered my question. And then later um, he was a director on gravity falls on an episode I wrote. And then after I pitched, my episode, um, I vomited <laughs> oh, because he didn't seem to laugh at my jokes. <laughs> I was like, Aaron Springer hates it. <laughs> completely overcome with anxiety. Because I love Aaron Springer. He's the best. Um, yeah. uh, so I was, but anyway, um, uh, and he was like totally nice and everything. But How old were you when you uh, joined the chat room and like how I got that idea that like, oh, maybe I can go into animation. I was probably like, 15 or something mm. and and I I, I I i read this thing that like the guy from rage against the machine did, did eight hours of guitar playing a day tom morello and i was like well if he's a guitar master then i'll be a drawing master <laughs> yeah. after, if i just draw for eight hours a day and i was like i was like fuck that i'm gonna draw 12 hours a day Oh, did you do that? I sort of did. I mean, it was variable. You know, some days it was like four or five, and I would really beat myself up. But some days I like drove like through like 12, 30. Hours. That's insane. That's Honestly, crazy. though, that's like, I personally believe that's the only way you get really good. It's just doing it all the time. It's true. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I actually learned the hard way that you also need natural aptitude. <laughs> um, because, I like, guess, I, 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 I drew, um like, you know, obscenely. For all those years, and then I remember g- coming to uh, CalArts, and this guy, Jeff Liu, who is like one of the best draftsmen oh, yeah. in our class, and he works on Steven Universe, and he's the best. I love him. Mm-hmm. And he was, I was, I was like, I'd drawn 12 hours a day for literally over 10 years at that point. And I had a stack of sketchbooks that was like taller than myself that I was very proud of. And then mm-hmm. I, I was like, he was way better than me. And I was like, oh, how long have you been drawing? He's like, um, I don't know. I probably started probably started about two years ago and i was like fuck it's just like <laughs> no really uh yeah well you know yeah but also like i know jeff and he can like i don't know 
I feel like he must have drawn a lot. He must have drawn a lot, be- like get- gotten a lot of like fanciful mileage really fast. Cause like I see him playing the guitar and he plays all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. he's, he's awesome. And he was like, so we were all like, Jeff, dude, holy shit. Like his, his student films and stuff were always so great. Um, and he was yeah. such a great animator and he, there was like so much joy in his animation. And I was sort of, when I was in school, I was like hoping that he wouldn't, figure out that he could be a better storyboard artist than anybody <laughs> i was like don't let him know that he could be a storyboard artist because he'll take my job um but uh but no i'm I'm super happy that he's doing really well yeah uh i got to work with him a little earlier this year he's great yeah but, he's awesome uh super talented how did you how did you hear of cal arts like um because uh a question that i like to ask is where did you grow up um, yeah, I grew up in um, this town called Salinas, California, uh, mm-hmm. which is the birthplace of John Steinbeck. Ever heard of him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Many people haven't, but um, no, that was like our claim to fame. We we read like every John Steinbeck book in high school, including ones that were like oh, yeah. bad. Wow, wow, they're really proud of that. It's oh, it was it's like ridiculous. <laughs> like we were one stop short of being like the Fighting Steinbecks was like our local. Uh, high school team or something we didn't actually do that but that was like the pride for john steinbeck was so high but yeah so so and it was like a small town and and i really loved it and i still love it and i grew up there and i had like sort of like as a child (laughs) i was like grown i was turned into a cartoonist by like the mutagen of being insanely lonely (laughs) i think that's ever that's all of our origin story yeah exactly exactly. all animators have the same origin story but I had a nice, um, I had a nice time as a as a teenager and stuff. Um, uh, but, but the thing, the, the way I sort of found out about Cal Arts was just sort of was on, was honestly a couple of things. One was like a DVD commentary for Samurai Jack that was basically like Cal Arts propaganda, <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right, this seems good. Yeah. And I watched all the Pixar audio commentaries, and those guys seemed like they were they they all came from Cal Arts, and I was like, okay, all right. But I didn't get into Cal Arts at first. I I I, I didn't even apply because I was terrified. So I went to this other school for illustration, and then it just occurred to me that I was like, I'm not gonna do illustration. I want to do cartoons. Um, mm-hmm. and then so I went to Cal Arts. Um, and but I got was, rejected the first time, and it was a whole thing. What was the um, What was the name of the illustration school? The uh, it was CCA, which actually now has an animation program, but at the time oh, yeah. didn't. It's uh. It was it was also called CCHD at the time. What was like the time gap between the first time you applied to Cal Arts and the second time? It was a year. So it was okay. like I, I thought I was like I was like, All right, I've taken some illustration classes, I could do this. And mm-hmm. then I applied and I got rejected and it just destroyed me. Oh, wow. But um in that destruction, mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, I'm not dead. Um uh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe I could just learn and get better and do better next time. So I literally did this thing that was like utterly psychotic, which is I found out that CalArts had a Sunday life drawing class, Corny Cole, who was this like legendary animator guy. And I would drive from Salinas to LA every Sunday, which is a six, five hour drive, six hour drive. Oh. And I had to wake up at three in the morning to get there what at like the 10. Oh my God. And I didn't tell anyone in my life that I was doing this. It was entirely secret. <laughs> oh, why? Were you like kind of like worried about something? Well, I, I just didn't want to like let people know that I was trying that hard if I were to fail. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. I see, I see the train of thought. So now. now that I made it in, I was like, yeah, I did that. But if I didn't make it in, I, that would that would be buried with me. If it, you never talk about it ever again yeah exactly <laughs> that would be it, on my deathbed i wouldn't tell anyone i gotta say there's something that i i mean we haven't known each other that long but i i know enough about you that i can say like you work so fucking hard at everything you do <laughs> like you have you have such an insane drive to the point where it seems like it like hurts you physically <laughs> but but like but i do i admire the shit out of it because it's like and so this week like we were recording uh you were posting a bunch of gravity falls uh-huh. behind the scenes stuff and there was that like insane schedule that oh yeah uh, you posted that you and alex were doing and like <laughs> first of all how accurate is that and second of all what was wrong with you two because <laughs> it, it's like it's batshit yeah, it's like it's like I woke. I mean, hey, I will say 
one hundred percent accurate. <laughs> I, okay, I, I would say to the kids out there, don't do it. It wasn't good. It wasn't healthy. Yeah. But um, it was one hundred percent accurate, and it, it was just stemmed from. I think it was like one. It was a couple of things. One is that like Alex was really great, and he trusted me. He was like, "This guy cares more than anyone I've ever met in my life." Hmm. Um, so I should like give him stuff to do, and 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 he, you know, we have a lot of the same taste and that yeah. sort of thing. So it like it it was very natural that we were sort. He was like, you know, stuff I was doing was actually getting used because I I've been like that in other jobs where I'm like. Oh, uh, I'm gonna give you a thousand notes, and here's some ideas, and blah 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 blah. And sometimes people are like, "Yeah, thanks, buddy, bye," and just oh. th- that just goes into the gutter, <laughs> yeah. goes into the yeah, dumpster. Yeah. So, um, it was really cool that Alex was so open to all that stuff. So, and yeah, so so it's like I would we would write on the weekends up until like you know four in the morning, and then we'd sleep for three hours, and then we'd wake up and write some more and read it to each other and slap each other in the face to wake each other up and stuff like it was Jesus. it was very um unhealthy but <laughs> but in, in the it, but in 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 hindsight I'm I'm so I I really look at that look at that time really fondly uh because yeah. because and it's like partially because people like the thing we did <laughs> right, I'd be right. well, if yeah, people sure. didn't like it I'd be like that was a waste of time it's great well yeah it shows like there's definitely it's like it's like the the driving thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, the show is is fantastic and it feels so cohesive and I think that that amount of work you guys put in like comes through. Yeah. We spectacularly. It, it, I mean, it's like it's like we definitely put the I mean, and that's sort of like was one of my driving things the whole time was is like I really believe that if you like put the love into it People will get yeah, love out of it. So yeah, true. it'll like, like beam it. out of the screen into people's hearts. I liked. Yeah, you posted those like lessons that you got from the show, and like, let me read some of them because I like them. <laughs> but yeah, it was like respect and love your characters. Yeah, which is very true. Don't be fragile. Like you got to be able to get rid of stuff. And 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 that was something that's funny that Alex was way better than me because I was like. He was like the dad, and I was like the mom, and I'm like, no, they're precious babies, and he's like, yeah. these kids have got to die, and I'm like, oh no, yeah, <laughs> kill your children. They always say when you're writing, kill your children. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. If, if something's wrong, you say like, if you identify a problem, any attempt at fixing it will eventually help. Yeah, the observation, invention, cliche pyramid, which I love that one because I think it's like you know you'll come up with an idea, the the, the royal you, yeah, and like. And a lot of people, I feel like, stop sh- stop at that. Like, just because it came out of their brain, they're like, this is good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's, like, mm-hmm. not enough. And you got to – that's the that's the trash idea. That's always the yeah. trash idea. And, like, you take that. That's the cliche. That's you working, you know, like, processing through stuff you already know. And so you take that, you throw it out, and you come up with something <laughs> completely different. Like, I try to do that with everything because I always end up hitting that – uh, wall of them. like everything here is like I've seen it before like yeah I completely change these things well and and it's totally true it's like it's like you know and and this is like one thing that I got from like you know sort of Pixar writing commentaries but I also got from like my own experience is like is like the first yeah the first idea the second third fourth is usually not that good and it like you get to interesting stuff on 10 12 15 mm-hmm. 30 mm-hmm. you know because um because you just have to because and it's and that I really hold that true because it's like the it in times at Gravity Falls when I was like at my worst, I would be writing something and then I would reread it and be like, oh, this is just a recycled Simpsons joke or Arrested Development joke or yeah. or, or or even like a Full House joke that I'm like sure. regurgitating from my childhood, and like yeah. and it it is like the way out of that was like okay, could this be I when I was like teaching I would give this example of like. At CalArts, everyone did movies. For a certain point, everyone did movies, and their, like, whole movie was about, like, a bear trying to get an apple out of a tree. For some reason, this was, like, in vogue in the 90s. Like, if you look at the old CalArts films, it's all that. And I was like, look, you can... If you do a bear getting an apple out of a tree, you can either have the bear transform into a rocket and fight the sun and fight God to get an apple out of its mouth and just make it so insane that it's new... Or you can like study a bear, find out what you know what bear sort of behavior is, and like really beautifully recreate it in in charcoal, and you could make it interesting that way. 
So those are like two ways to make this like boring idea interesting. Like one, make it crazy. <laughs> yeah. And two, like really observe life and and sort of draw from that. So I I, I sort of like Alex always made fun of me on Gravity Falls because like he's like Mike, you either want everyone skipping rocks and talking about childhood, or you want crazy Furby monsters screaming in gibberish languages. <laughs> like yeah. I, I was always like pushing it to be either totally insane or like. The most grounded mm-hmm. thing I could imagine. Well, yeah, I think that I think just always trying to push past what the influences you already have is good. It's like it's a, it's good to have that structure, but you want to add to the pot, yeah, and not just keep stirring. That's yeah, it's it's something I have said before. That it's like you want to try to always add to the pot. Yeah, totally. And then you had like characters' goals must have value and be relatable for your audience to care about them, which is very true. Say something is the fifth. Which is good. I like that too. Mm-hmm. I think that um, I mean, like a lot of cartoons are just comedies, and that's fine. But I think that people, especially now, want more out of their entertainment. They want yeah. a message, and they want something that is a little deeper. Well, and I, I think that's why people started telling stories in the first place. It's like right. really heady, but it's like, oh, you know, originally it was just like, don't go over there. There's a saber tooth tiger over there. But now it's sort of like, oh, how do I deal with in-laws or something? And it's like, and if you've got this big megaphone, you might as well say something. with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and also another thing, which is something that I railed against school was <laughs> I, 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 I'm very, I was a very, I was a giant, I was a huge brat and I probably still am, but. But in school, I was like, I was like, these, sometimes, these movies, it's just like story porn. It's like, you know, you just get your ending, and then there's some moral, but it doesn't fucking mean anything. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, as I'm screaming and spitting on the face of the person <laughs> I'm talking to. But, like, but I do think that that's true, is sometimes you're like, okay, this works, A to B to C to D. But, like, they miss the part where it's like, oh, what are you saying about life mm-hmm. or the human mm-hmm. or whatever that that somebody can watch and take from because i think that w- on gravity falls and in this movie like the when we were at our sort of you know not at our best we weren't doing that but when the best episodes that clicked on gravity falls are the ones where it's like oh this is about something that people can see and relate oh, to oh yeah and be like oh i went through that this is cool this is this is helpful yeah yeah i just feel like you know it's so hard to get a show made or even just to get into animation period and it's like if you don't use that to to try to like contribute something positive you yeah know, try to help somebody work something like you're kind of wasting yep that effort that's how i feel i don't know 100 percent. i 100 percent agree with you. yeah uh i like this one you need to blow smoke up your friends asses that's great yeah support your that, pals. that's how i that is entirely how i got through life that is yeah. why i'm here <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I do Just think that that's friendly. it's that's like shockingly important, and I've I've found that like when I have a friend like that, and we're just like, "You're great, no, you're great, we're gonna fucking <laughs> rule the world." <laughs> like those yeah. are the times when we actually succeed because it's you know if you don't have that person around, you're just gonna be like, "This sucks," and then no one's it's there so to be hard. like, "No, dude, you're awesome." <laughs> yeah. That is so true. I it's so like- true, and I, I still will, <laughs> will deny it. I'm like, no, you're just being nice. And like, shut up. And I'm like, shut up. And we get in a fight. <laughs> People love a mystery more than you would believe. That's great. Uh, very much Gravity Falls. Um, it's It was always shocking to us that, like, we could leave, like, there would be, like, a sentence of a mystery. And the whole the whole thing was, like, a kind of a sitcom structure. And then there was yeah. one question. And people were like, what's the answer? Yeah. And I was like, you didn't like the joke? <laughs> yeah, that's it. People just want to know the answer. I like the put in the details and people will love you for it. Reward people for their attention, yeah. which is great. People always like that kind of stuff. I mean, I uh, I only have had experience with that with, with my short, with Planet Panic. And like, there was a lot of stuff that I put in just because I thought it would be fun. Mm-hmm. And I was it was so validating when people would find like, Nice reference to Gurren Lagan over here, or something like that. And I <laughs> yeah, was like, totally. Oh my God, people are watching this thing. I like really thought that people would just like you know, not even pay attention to it. But Gravity no. Falls is, is packed full of uh, of little details and things. Well, it's true. I I learned that when I was a kid when I watched um, The Tick, and in the first episode, Chairface Chippendale tries to draw a, his name on the moon, and then it 
it got me so excited and I couldn't explain why when I was a child, but like every other episode, I remember telling my mom and she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I was like, Chairface Jibbidil, he wrote his name on the moon in episode one and it's still got a C and an H on there in episode 10. And my mom was like, I I gotta go, man. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. But I remember always like referencing that and being like how it's like, you feel like, oh, the person cares. Like, you know, yeah. you could always tell the difference between even when you were a kid. I remember being like this Fantastic Four show doesn't seem like anyone cares about it. But this X-Men yeah. show is great. You know, like um, it's like you certain shows it. you could just feel the love. Yeah. Well, it's like you said the the Super Mario comparison with like there's coins everywhere that you can possibly get to. And it's yes. Like, I, I knew. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I know you get up here. And then the last two is fight for the right team, which is great. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you want to hire hire your friends, hire the people who are going to make it the best thing it can be, mm-hmm. and you got to fight for quality, which is which is very true. But yeah, I like that a lot. I think that those are really good um, little bits of advice for anybody that's like moving up in the animation world and trying to mm-hmm. make something. So thank you for putting that out there. Yeah, no problem. I mean, hey, I, again, the fact that anyone listens is, is gold to me. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, my sure. ramblings are valued by some human is a, is a miracle. Oh, it's all valuable. It's all valuable. Um, but let's t- let's take it back a little bit. So, you uh, you went to Cal Arts, mm-hmm. and then uh, what kind of happened from there? What was your first gig, and uh, yeah, how'd you get into the industry? I mean, the ho- the whole time at Cal Arts, I was just m- terrified that I wasn't going to get a job. That was like my driving force, and I think that's why I develop the work ethic that I had because I kind of knew I was like I'd started to go to this other art school and I was like if I don't make it now I have gone to arts two different art schools and failed at both I'm gonna kill myself (laughs) I mean not really but it was it it felt like life or death and and I so I developed this crazy work ethic and I was like well look if I if I can look back on this and say I couldn't have tried any harder than I then win or lose, I did the right thing or whatever. Sure. So so basically, I just worked incredibly hard at CalArts, and I, and I, I was very stressed out and uh, a lunatic, and I, you know, I, I started balding and all these things. But I think the the first thing that sort of and and I got I, I got an internship at JibJab based on this cartoon that I made um, called Everybody Dies in Ninety Seconds, and then I did my third film, and that's the best thing about CalArts. Like honestly, like. A lot of Cal Arts is just, I've said it before, but it's like, it's sort of like they just send out a bunch of talented artists into the wilderness. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, all right, what'd you, and then at the end of the year, they're like, what'd you find? And then some people are like, I found a bunch of rocks. And yeah. then, and then <laughs> they don't even tell you that that's the wrong thing to do. They just sort of don't look at you. And then other people are like, I found some gold or whatever. Like, it's so like, I don't know, like, figure it out on your own. Like, there's some great teachers there, but it's also just, it's a strange school but the thing that's amazing is that it it, it makes you do four films so you can like that's try nice. things fail maybe you're because my second year film is t to b trash top to bottom it's garbage because i got like so full of myself for my first year film being like marginally successful that i was like i'm a, a king <laughs> and then my, <laughs> my second year film just sucks ass i hope nobody ever sees it <laughs> and then uh, I didn't put it on the internet. Um, and then uh, and then my third year, I kind of learned and I got like more humble. And I was like, oh, maybe it shouldn't be a 10 minute long epic. And I made this cartoon called Work that is still on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And uh, it did really well. And because of that, I got um, this internship that I was trying. That was my whole goal at CalArts. I was trying to get this Pixar. Internship. That was like my life dream. And I was, mm. I'm going to get this Pixar internship. I'm going to marry this girl because um, my wife at the time or now <laughs> um, right. but my, my um, sort of the girl that I loved at the time um, who was not my wife uh, lived in Emeryville. So I was like, she lives in Emeryville. I'm going to work in Emeryville. She lived in Oakland. She lives in Oakland. I'm going to work in Emeryville where I'm going to have the perfect life. It's going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then I got the internship at Pixar and I, I just collapsed like a dying star under the weight of that internship (laughs) like really it was kind of like a reality show or something because it's like there were five interns and my the people i was interning with were awesome it was like shion takeuchi who i love is one of my best friends and is doing inside job at netflix 
and yeah. uh, Stan Moore and Sabrina Cortugno and G Hyun Park. It was it was like a great group of people that mm-hmm. I loved. Yeah, uh, Glenn Williams. Um, but it was sort of like a reality show because we kind of knew like only one or two of us was gonna get the gig. And I was like went and I think I was like. I don't know. It was like a big combination of things. One, me freaking out. Two, me not being that good at drawing. Uh, you know, like I could do well at storyboards if I had a really long time because I think I cared more than other people. But as soon as like we all had the same assignment and we all were like working equally hard, like I was just getting smoked by everyone else. And it was just like it was so devastating because I was like, oh, I can't do it. I like the my dream was being a feature storyboard artist and I like don't have the goods. Um, I remember like sobbing in my little Pixar apartment. It was like in Emeryville on the ground on my birthday. And my wife had like brought me <laughs> like uh, balloons and, uh, you know, all my favorite foods. And I'm like, <laughs> can you feed them to me? You know, not really, but yeah, but it was like, it was just so sad. Um, but it was, it was really interesting because even though that was like so, so cataclysmically, Oh, also, Real quick, just want to get this out there. While I was at Pixar, <laughs> I just want to out myself here. While I was at Pixar, um, there was uh, a person who would take down all the notes that the mentors had about us. Uh huh. And it was in this little black and white uh, composition book. And uh-huh. I was always at the studio at like four in the morning when no one else was there, and I would like ride the, you know, the little scooters around and like with. Just, just sweating and the mates. famous scooters, and, yeah, yeah, and like and swirls in my eyes. And then one day, I was like, I was like, oh, this is the this is the desk of the girl. There's the composition book. Like it was on her desk, and I like, I grabbed a composition book out of the uh, uh, supply closet and did like the Indiana Jones switch. And then I like <laughs> scurried, and there was like cameras and stuff. We like scurried into a closet, and I was like <laughs> reading everything. And I called my friend. I was like, "She gone. They're gonna offer you a job. I gotta go. They're after me." Um, <laughs> and it was like it was. I was I was touched. This is a reality show. <laughs> it was. It was really like a reality show. And I was touched because they were like, "He's trying hard. <laughs> He's getting better." Aww. Um, uh, He's doing you know. It. So I was like, I, I felt good about that. But um, it was like this insane, reckless thing that when I look back, I was like, why did I do that? Um, anyway. So. Wow. That's so funny. That happened. <laughs> um, and, and, but, but, in, and, and while I was there, weirdly, um, that the cartoon I was talking about work made its way onto some weird industry list. So mm. a bunch of people all of a sudden wanted to hire me right after this like cataclysmic nightmare internship that I had. So it's weird because, like, one side of things, I'm, it's like, oh, you're a terrible fraud. And then other people wanted to hire me, uh, including I once got an email from Dr. Dre, which was, like, the highlight of my life. Oh. It wasn't really Dr. Dre, I later learned. But the subject, like, from bar said Dr. Dre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was yeah. like, it's like, uh, my name is Stanley uh, Abramowitz. I'm Mr. Dre's uh, assistant. But um, but anyway, um, all that happened. And then, I so I tried, I was, like, trying... You know, and I pitched something to MTV, which would have been a disaster if that would have actually happened. But I think they could like smell like this person is a, is a, just not ready for anything like this. Mm. But um, but uh, uh, Alex from Gravity Falls was like, "Oh, hey, I talked to this guy, and he said you're the like new, you know, funny person at CalArts. Like, do you? I really liked your films. You know, we have a lot of the same interests. Do you want to meet?" Uh, and at the time, I wasn't that interested in TV. But I was like, all right, I'll meet, whatever. And he, it, Alex was, like, so passionate, and we got along so well that, like, right from the first meeting, I was like, oh, like, we were talking, like, old friends by the end of the interview. Yeah. Also, you guys hadn't, like, you and Alex hadn't met before that interview. No, we didn't. We'd, like, I, I think people assume that we, like, are, like, cousins or something or, like, <laughs> went to the same high school because we're, we're like like inseparable at like in gravity falls a little bit. Um, but, yeah. um, but we didn't, we didn't know each other. I mean, we went to, we both went to CalArts and we both did this Pixar internship, but we didn't, we, there was no, never any overlap, mm. but, but we just got along really well. And he, yeah. I was, I was just really taken by the idea of the show and I was like, it has continuity and it just seemed like he had the right kind of energy. And also I knew that I eventually want to make movies and he was sort of pitching it. Like, he's like, look, man, we're going to make 21 movies. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to make 21 little movies together. 
uh, it'll it, it'll be like the gym. It'll be like going out, you know, going to the movies. And it totally was. Um, it was like incredible how much I learned in that time because it was really like making twenty one little movies, um, especially with Gravity Falls because it was so ambitious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that that's that's how I got there. Yeah, it's very cinematic for sure. Yeah. We yeah we tried because it was it was a lot of it was a lot of people honestly from that Pixar internship which was a great internship I just did terribly but um but like Alonzo Ramirez Ramos went to it and Matt Brawley went to it and we all like kind of gained sort of love and understanding of like cinematic storytelling and Eric Fountain uh, was another guy who did it and and we were all like trying to push on all fronts as hard as we could yeah it comes through I think you can tell that there was like significant effort to uh to make every every facet of it uh solid um so then uh yeah gravity falls seems like it was a a hell of a hell of a time uh in many ways and uh what kind of happened after that yeah i mean well the weird thing was is i left i mean i think a lot like my friends from high school are like what are you doing dude my Mm -hmm. my cousin has a dipper hat (laughs) you're an idiot yeah (laughs) <laughs> and it was just because I I was basically like sort of Alex's like right hand man type person. Like I was sort of like assistant showrunner, junior showrunner, like you know, mm-hmm. uh, assistant to the regional manager. But like, and and I was like, I felt like I felt like I had learned everything that I was going to learn at the show. And and it was also it was so I mean like like I sort of pointed out in, in that thing documenting my time there. It was a it was grueling. And I was like, if I'm going to be working this hard, like I should be working this hard on my own thing. Because also I was like, I'm not getting any younger, you know? Um, And I'd heard stories of older animators who were like, look at me and grab me by the arm and like, Hey, if you're going to do anything, do it before you have kids. Um, And I was like, "Uh." Uh, (laughs) so I was like, all right, I guess I got to do that. This guy seems serious. So, so, and, and the other thing was my, um, my wife, Molly, who I love dearly and is in the other room. She was in Boston at the time. She was going to grad school. And I, she was in Boston and I was in LA and it was kind of weird. And she, and she had sort of been like, sacrificed for me in my career. Oh yeah. So I was like, all right, well I'll move to Boston. You know, we'll, 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 let's do it. Um, so I moved to Boston and my plan when I moved to Boston was that I was going to uh, write a great coming of age story that was an R rated 2d animated masterpiece (laughs) okay (laughs) and i wrote it and the problem the only problem was that it was really bad (laughs) oh that's not that's not that That was the one issue with it but it was like that time in boston was really wonderful and it was and it was it was really what i needed at the time was to not just be throwing myself at at the show because it's like and and it's like i was so rooting for the show and I was consulting with it at the time and stuff, and I, I wanted to help as much as I could, but I just knew that it was like, I don't know if I could give 14 hours a day to this again, because I would only be learning how to better be Alex's sidekick. And I was like, I'm pretty good. I know how to do that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. How long did it take you to kind of like come to that real- realization, like to be like, all right, maybe I should take a break on the show? Like what What inspired it? Uh, What inspired it and also like kind of like how long... Like, did it, like, you know, how long did you stay on Gravity Falls? Yeah, well, because I was on it for years because I was on it before it got greenlit until Mm -hmm. it, until the sort of second season started up. That was kind of where I broke because I was like, I don't know if I could do another season. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, I was probably on the show for like three years or something or four years. I started Mm -hmm. in 2010 and Mm -hmm. I think I ended in 2014, Um, but like the beginning of 2014. Yeah, that's a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah, and it was, you know, it's because it, cause it, cause it, like the show got delayed and blah, blah, blah. Um, because we were working really hard on it. We wanted it to be great. And then, the, I mean, the re, yeah, just the, the, the and, and then it was just sort of looking at the second season and just being like, I don't know if I'm going to learn as much this time. I think I learned the stuff that I'm going to learn from this. Yeah. Um, and I had this, you know, I've got a song to sing, I've got a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And then I made my movie and it was really bad. And it's like, it's so funny. In, in, in hindsight, it totally makes sense that it's bad. It's like, it was about me and my wife um, meeting each other. It was like a romantic comedy. Oh, yeah. And it's called The Seven Year Con because I was like in love with my wife for years before I said anything. And it was like, I was like, oh, this will be this fun romantic comedy type thing. And it's about, you know, me growing up. But like 
after I read it, I was like, oh, it's just it's about a um, uh, white male in his 20s who gets everything he wants and doesn't learn any lessons. <laughs> you don't need more of those stories. I was like, this is ter-. everyone who read it was like, what does he learn? What's happening? <laughs> So, uh, but that you was... learned something writing the script. I did. I, I, I mean, I learned a ton writing that script. I went into. I, I wrote it in a cabin, and I, I at one point, like, oh, I think, literally went insane. I remember um, it was like the day before I was gonna send it to everyone, and I, I had like lost my mind, and I was stabbing a cardboard box with a knife, um, <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like it was. It was. You know, you I just like I, keep adding to this, like screaming, naked, <laughs> covered in peanut butter. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I just, I guess I just care a lot. You work so hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I, you know, and you're right that, that it was, that it was totally, I did learn. But you were going to say, but you're right. I was covered in peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you're right. <laughs> was, <laughs> you're right. I did just kill some. That was the, no. uh, you know, now that yeah. I'm remembering. I, it's what it takes, man. Sometimes. I did commit manslaughter to yeah. write this bad script. Do you want to write a good script? <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. I, okay, this is completely left field. Sure. But I remember watching a movie. Uh, I think it was European. I'm not sure. About the script writer. He's terrible <laughs> at writing. And, like, he cannot get his big break until, uh, by accident, he, like, I, uh, I'm I'm gonna like kind of make this up because I can't remember exactly how it happens, but like there is a kitten on like a windowsill or something, and he's trying to help the kitten or whatever. But then like mm-hmm. it like they're on the fifth floor or something, and then the kitten like uh, trips and falls mm-hmm. and unfortunately dies, and he's like, oh no, what have I done? And then but then the next day he writes something really good, <laughs> and then. He- <laughs> He becomes obsessed with his power being like he has to murder kids. <laughs> oh my god, okay. that's a funny story. Um, I sympathize yeah. with that with that kind of weird. I, yeah, I'm not so to that weird. extent. I don't remember how it ends. I just remember watching a little bit. I don't know. It was probably like one of those like direct to TV um, kind of like live action. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, let's, you let's, did not do on. that. You were... <laughs> hey, I'm interested. I'm, let's find out where this goes. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the end to the story. This is going to remain a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will dig it up. <laughs> yeah, and you. so you wrote your script and you sent it to everyone and they said... I mean, they were... Everyone was really nice about it. <laughs> Nobody was like, this is fucking trash. But I just think I sort of like... I don't know, just sort of like... I was like, oh, write another draft or something. And then I was like, oh, you know what? This might be better if I just make a short... Um, cause I was really excited and I still am excited about like one of the big things about the script was that it was, um, I really, and I, I was able to get a little bit of this in the movie, which I was really excited about, but, um, about just externalizing, um, your thought process and the whole thing was sort of like the hook of it a little bit was that everything that the main character was thinking and feeling you were able to actually see and sort mm-hmm. of like experience. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if something bad happened, it was like a nuclear bomb or whatever and then it would sort of go back and stuff has done that before and stuff but i was like let's take it to 11 and i was really excited about that so i made a short basically that was that was the same idea because i had also talked to i like knew one person who was in hollywood and i asked him i was like hey here's my idea for a movie and he's like this is this is poison (laughs) (laughs) he's like this is a nightmare of an idea (laughs) he's like look i think this can be great but you're not gonna make it at a studio what are you nuts like 2d animated coming of age story that's r rated that's 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 all poison so he's like look make a short and if it's successful you know show it at sundance or whatever so i was like okay that's cool so i i made a short and it was like okay i like the short i looked i watched but actually while i was making that short um sony approached me and they were like do you have any ideas for animated movies Mm. and i was like and it was so funny because at the time i had so much bravado because I didn't care, I was like, I like had my feet on, you know, it's a, I didn't really, but it's sort of like I had my feet on the table and I'm like, what do you got? You know, because I was like, I was like, I don't know what this interview is. I, I'm not trying to make any movies. But then I got really excited about the idea of Sony because they didn't have an identity and yeah, they, yeah. they just gotten hacked. 
Yeah, yeah that's right. And it, and it was sort of like, I was like, oh, man, maybe there's a ch- to do something really cool here. Um, Because I was like, they don't have a house style. They're asking me, so it proves yeah. their fucking taste is amazing. No, uh, <laughs> but they're like, they're asking me, which is weird, but I'll take it. So I, I, I got in my car and I turned on a tape recorder driving to Salinas, uh, my hometown, which is like five hours away. And then I just recorded a bunch of ideas. And I was like, because I was just thinking, I was like, oh, is there something that I would love that would excite me that could also be a big animated movie? And to my, and I have kind of like, my taste is kind of like mainstream. It's not like I only like the void or whatever Mm -hmm. so it's like (laughs) it's like i love pixar movies and you know sitcoms and stuff so basically a bunch of the ideas that i made i was like oh this would be great i could make any of these there so so i and then i sort of picked my favorite one which was the one that got made the machine and at the time it was just i just thought it would be funny to imagine my dad sort of doesn't understand technology having to fight robots Uh, and i think (laughs) robots are funny and i love robots and i love my family and i was like oh that, that all seems like a good stew and then, uh, and then basically I, and then I sort of pitched it to Sony and they were into it and they're like, Hey, why don't you just come and work here? And since I was like working at home in isolation, I was like, that sounds great. Cause I had no boundaries on myself and I was like being really lazy. Just gr- grizzled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was like quarantine before quarantine. Right. But, uh, but then, and I went into Sony and then I just sort of got a real head of steam and then I just started sprinting. Which I later learned from all the feature directors. They're like, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> Where, Cause like, I was like, I was like, I got a poster and I'm, I'm hiring, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I remember I paid, like, they didn't want to give me a storyboard artist because they're like, you don't need a storyboard artist yet. And I was like, no, but I do need a storyboard artist. Cause I want to really sell this scene. So mm-hmm. I, I called Matt Brawley and I was like, Matt, um, how much can I pay you to, uh, board the scene for me? And he's like, tell you what, Mike, I'm really fast. I could probably do it by Thursday. But, uh, you know, if you want to pay me, just give me a PlayStation 4. <laughs> That's, that was the exchange? He's like, you work at Sony. Um, and I was like, I was like, you got it, buddy. And I like, I, one day I was like walking across the lot with holding a PlayStation 4 and like, uh, <laughs> like four games. And he delivered and his boards were awesome. And it like got me the next meeting. And then I, it was just. I was just kind of scrambling from day one to like do 10 times more than I needed to because I knew that there was like a, since it was an original idea, there's a big burden of uh, proof on it. Yeah. Do you feel like you had to deliver, like even though they didn't explicitly ask you to deliver more, like you felt like you had to deliver more to really sell the idea? Yeah. I mean, just because I knew I was like, I just knew, I was like, look, I know talented people. And, and, you know, in the studio sort of rightly, we're like, look, this is just some lunatic in an office. It's a, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's basically a lotto scratcher. <laughs> like if he yeah. pays off, great. If he does it, whatever, we'll let him go. And, uh, and I just knew that if I really cranked and outpaced things that were in development for years, if I could like, wow, this, because it basically I was like, I was like, if I could kind of almost make them believe that the movie's already getting made. They'll just be oh, like, well, look at this. It's already happening. <laughs> like, I would do this nutty stuff where I would, like, vote. I would. I got a really nice poster made. Like, I got some of my buddies from Gravity Falls to work on. I got Lindsay Oliveras, who was, like, a world-class hero production designer, to 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 draw it and, and all these people. And I got, like, the super team together to make this awesome poster. And then uh, Ian Worrell did the art and, or did the colors and stuff. Um, And then I... And then I like Google, I sort of inserted it like it was on a poster in Times Square and I like photoshopped it and I like did the atmospheric perspective really well. Cause I was like, look, if they can, if they can imagine this in the world, that's wild. then they can like show their bosses like, look, I mean, look, doesn't that look like a movie that people would watch? Oh my God. That's so oh, interesting. Wow. Cause mm-hmm. because, and it's like, and it's like, you know, and, and the other thing was that everyone at Sony was like, so great. Like, like, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was me busting my ass, but everyone was really receptive. Like Mike Moon was the guy who brought me in. He was the guy from mm. Disney who I knew from Disney. And he was just like, this guy's a psycho. He'll, <laughs> he's, he'll probably make something good. And like, and he's like, he's like, Mike, this will be amazing. It's going to be amazing. 
with Mike, everything's like it's, it's Yogi like Yogi Bear. Yeah, it's a little Yogi Bear. It's like, oh my god, this is so shitty. Or it's is amazing. There's like no, it's everything is black and white with Mike. Um, but I love Mike, and he like we would this movie would not exist without him. But also Christine Belson, who was the new president, like loved the movie like from the jump. But it was like it was partially because it was so figured out. Like I had posters and a and a and a map of the United States with red string dots on it to like map out the road trip they were on. And I had posters of each character that you could like put in a lobby. And I had a movie poster that was framed that I, that I still have in my uh, apartment. And if you turn the poster around, I stole a Trump, a Smurfs two poster and just like flipped it. (laughs) Cause there's a bunch of that stuff sitting around the office. And I was like, uh, I was like, uh, there's like 30 Smurfs two posters. I I think I could take one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> like no one cared. Like I, I, I still to this day have a. There's some sort of BAFTA that the Smurfs won. <laughs> and, Smurfs and won a it BAFTA. was it was in an it was in a cubicle outside my office for like months, and I was like, look, this needs a good home. <laughs> so I just wrote in duct tape our na- the name of our movie over the award, <laughs> and I just put it up in my office, and I still have it. Yeah, oh, great. Why not? But um, you, you have an award. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You it's, might not have won it, but you have an award. It's an award getting film. Uh, <laughs> it's an <laughs> award having film. <laughs> yeah, award having. <laughs> award having film. <laughs> that's really funny. But I mean, that's I. I love the idea. I, I've never heard this idea of like making almost like coming up with a, a show of presenting like this is already real and yeah like, like that's such an interesting approach and you're making me rethink everything i've ever done in my <laughs> development <laughs> like why 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 not like why not it's, just well, because the number one thing about development is that they they don't because understandably they're like look if we're not paying you we, we don't want to have to ask you to do all this work because it's like probably illegal oh yeah so so they're like, look, just come in with a just come in with a verbal pitch. But it's like I know from experience that I f- yeah. fuck a verbal pitch. <laughs> you know, like you come in with a verbal pitch, you're like, what if it's a family on a road trip and then robots? Like, if I say that sentence, people are like, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. No. Mm-hmm. But if I have a really entertaining scene boarded by genius storyboard artist Matt Brawley and, and Data Terrace, who I also tricked into, <laughs> into helping me, <laughs> um, uh, the two showrunner Disney TV showrunners. And uh, and I have a poster that looks awesome that you could imagine in the world. And even when to get the show greenlit, I made a Manchi plush. I made wow. uh, I, I had my wife um, who was very mad at me at the time. And I will forever be grateful for this. She p- painstakingly painted a robot action figure while she was mad at me. She's like, I really love you Aww. because I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Aww. And like I. I took a Star Wars thing and I cut it out and I made a backing to it. So it's like I every step of the way cuz I knew that there was like a marketing guy that was going to be there and I was like, "We'll make it look marketable." So like every step of the way I just tried to make it seem like it was it had already started. <laughs> and like if they were to green light it, it's like, "Well, they're already ahead of schedule," which is interesting. It's 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 it's, it's like it's kind of an insane way to do it because it takes so much work and if it backfires, it's so funny because it put me into so many situations where it was lucky because like Sony animation was always like so good to us and like loved the project and loved us and was always like, incredibly sweet. And they like fought for the movie, which is not something that uh movie studio executives are famous for, <laughs> you yeah. know, like Christine Belson and Pam Marsden said like, look, we think this is really funny. Everyone at the studio loves it. Like let's do it, you know? And everyone who was worried that spider man or whatever were like, Oh mm-hmm. boy, this seems like a risky bet. But it, it was it was really stressful all the way through. Like the whole time, it was like fighting an uphill battle uh, in terms of development because it was such a we we always just had the burden of proof was always on us to prove that the movie was great. Um, because they're like, look, if this movie isn't great, then it's gonna lose out to ten other properties that people know the name. Yeah. So it like it was really hard. Like it, it it was sort of like it's like that. Speaking of Samurai Jack, it's like that episode of Samurai Jack where he's like trying to jump with the backpack on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> jump good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you feel like um when you um where 
uh, selling them on like, yeah, this was a great movie and all that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, did you have to do a lot of like concept talk or more just like, this was the story. Like, I guess the question is, is it more like a theory type of like pitch? Like, um, this is the emotional arc and this is why this is meaningful and this is like a concept or yeah. is it more like a nitty gritty like this is act one and this is act two and yeah. this is kind of like the jokes and the you know like it's sort of it's sort of a weird balance because like it's weird because I found like because I always wanted to have everything figured out like soup to nuts and I always would always give myself these extra deadlines because in, in, in development everyone's so chill because yeah. like there aren't any deadlines so they're like, whatever, man, having three weeks, yeah. three months, you know? And I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, what are you talking about? They'll have it in four, four weeks, four weeks th- done, start to finish, outline, act one, two, and three. And they're like, uh, sure, <laughs> whatever, uh-huh. weirdo. So I would always like push to have those done. But I, 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 ha- I did find that the magic bullet was not to, because like I, I would find like I would figure out the story and I'd feel really good about it. But then if you pitch that out loud, it takes like, 63 minutes and then like they've heard the story but they haven't experienced it and it's like weird so i found that the best thing was like a middle ground where you have a indication of where the story's going and the big moves of the story and then you have little it's sort of like in in uh vi- the video game world where you have a demo right you have like a vertical mm-hmm. slice say mm-hmm. and you say like okay i'm just gonna have this one scene soup to nuts this is what the move. This is what the tone of the movie is. Mm. And I like wrote a scene that I would like. I workshopped a long time, and I was like, I wrote ten different scenes, and then I narrowed it down. I showed it to all my buddies. I showed Jeff Rowe, who uh, eventually ended up being the co-director and co-writer, and I showed Alex, and I showed all these people, and then I got to a scene that I felt good about. Um, and then so it was basically like it was kind of like a trailer for the movie, mm-hmm. but it was like this entertaining scene on its own. And then mm-hmm. I had an idea of this. Of the, I had in my head what the whole story was, but I only pitched like fifteen percent. You know, I, I pitched see. basically. Here's basically who the characters are, what their motivations are. I would pitch like you know, it's like a family going on a road trip, and then I'd be like, and then the family's got to fight. You know, everything from Roombas to Furbies, and then uh, you know, and then and then sort of basically pitch the big arc of it, like and father and daughter reconcile and blah 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 so you're kind of like pitching almost in a trailer way where you're kind of mm. giving like the big beats and yeah, just kind of yeah, selling it's like a synopsis yeah a, yeah. a log line i guess yeah whatever totally. it is yeah yeah that's that's interesting yeah i mean i know nothing about the feature world i barely know the tv world <laughs> but i yeah i mean it seems like it's such a colossal task to try to get a movie made especially an original movie and uh, that makes sense. It makes sense that you have to put in that extra effort, even if they don't technically ask for it. Because yeah, how the, how the fuck well, else are you gonna get that? Equipment? Total. And I and I totally understand them because it's like they've got to convince three hundred people. You know, three hundred yes. people who are like who don't want to make an original thing. <laughs> right. You know, and yeah. and it's like and it's like no one is at fault for that being so hard, other than the fact that the movie industry is like this or what. Well, you know. yeah. I mean, there's millions involved. I, I do think that like, it feels when I talk to younger artists that are just getting in, they they have this misconception that like pitching is like binary, and mm-hmm. that's like you have a great idea and you pitch it and yeah. then it's like done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, totally. boy, that is wrong. And but also <laughs> like, it's not even that. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just it, it's never ending. And I think they also. They also think that executives have the power, like, you know, as long as you can, like, pitch to a studio, they'll make it. Or, like, I love yeah. the thing that people always say to me, which is, like, you should take it to Adult Swim or whatever. And it's like, yeah. oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, <laughs> let me just, like, go ahead and pitch it to them. And it's like, no, it, it is you hope to find people that believe in you. Yeah. And, and then they have to sell it to their bosses who have to sell it to their bosses. Yeah. And so it's just, like... You really got to do the extra work. And I, yeah, I went through the same thing where they would like ask me for, you know, just 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 like do a little bit of just do a little bit of, yeah. of uh, you know, of a show Bible. And then I would do like all of this art and they were like, oh, we didn't think you would give us all of this. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? Like, I, I want this thing to happen. And yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. 
you got to put in that extra effort. Well, and, and totally. And it's like, it's so easy. I think it's like, it's really like, I feel like when I was a kid, I would be like, executives are evil. It was like fed to me by John. <gasps> yeah. Like yeah. executives are evil monsters and <laughs> artists are pure, beautiful butterflies. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not, entire, not really. And true. it's like, it's, it's like, you know, there, there's, there's shades to all this, but, but it's, but it's also like, I think people like to blame executives on stuff but it's like you know sometimes ideas don't work and sometimes ideas aren't sellable and sometimes you know and also sometimes like executives have helped us a lot you know by being like look this isn't you know like our first draft me and jeff uh wrote it and we were like high-fiving looking at the sunset you know hugging and then we got notes (laughs) the next day like "Ooh, ah hey guys yeah, it's a lot of tone stuff. A lot of ooh, it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What? What? You're not? Why are you not high fiving me?" <laughs> yeah, you're like mid high five when they come in. And they were so they were totally right because they were like, "This just isn't that warm." Um, mm-hmm. and and it was like I think it was like you know it was it was like based in reality, like about my family and stuff. Um, yeah. but it was like. I sort of wasn't, I was like, oh, all the funny parts about my family are the parts where we're not getting along. And it's like, it just turns out that people not get along for 90 pages, like makes you want to rip your eyeballs out. Mm. And they were like, great at being like, look, this just needs to be warmer. Take some time, you know, and then we made it warmer and it got a lot better, you know, and that was because of the evil exec. <laughs> well, yeah, execs, I mean, they have, first of all, they have an objective view of whatever it is you're pitching and, mm-hmm. and they're basically... They're yeah, they're they're not out to like let's ruin <laughs> like I know, fucking I know. Power Rangers villains like the their Rita hands. Repulsa. How can we destroy creative <laughs> projects? But it's like they are looking at it like a mom in Minnesota, you know, just yeah, like totally. some like Midwestern. Yeah, like what are how are what is their perception of this? And I I quickly realized that going through through my development process that it's like oh they're giving the feedback that anybody any layman would give you know mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. meanwhile i'm bouncing these ideas off of my friends that have seen every episode of fucking you know mob psycho 100 or whatever, and like, <laughs> yeah and, totally. and, and have played all these and they're like yeah dude i get it i get what you're going for and it's like yeah but that's not even the audience you know like yeah. that's not necessarily the audience and um and so it's important to have that that filter and that um outside perspective on on uh ideas yeah original ideas i was gonna ask actually um mike do you have like um friends outside of animation that you show your ideas and or like your scripts or like all of that too um yeah i show i i, I mostly show my wife um mm-hmm. like a great editor and normal mm. person <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's she's like an artist but she's like a fine artist so she doesn't mm-hmm. um she's not like entrenched in the same stew <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. I'm in. So she's able to be like, this is great. And, or like, I didn't understand this or like, this, you know, cause basically that's all you really need is somebody who's just like, comes to you in good faith and says like, here's what I'm getting out of it. I'm right. getting X, Y, and Z. Is that what you were trying to do? And then you're oh, like, okay. either yes or no. You know, I was like, Oh, that was supposed to be funny. Okay. that didn't work. Or, you know, great. That came across or whatever. So I, I, I sort of, I mostly show her, but I do show, I do mostly show my animation friends. <laughs> no, I, I, I asked because I, this is something that's been on my mind a lot. Like exactly. And I, and I asked that because Jane was talking about like the audience and it's true mm-hmm. that like, I do feel that as well as someone in animation that like, I talk about like TV shows and movies mm-hmm. people who also work in animation. And, and yeah, we, we have like, it's great. And at the same time, we can easily like lose track of yeah. like what it, you know, like um, uh, what it's like to just live in the world that is not animation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, I mean, totally. It can be an echo chamber. And that's, that's actually exactly, one of the yeah. things I loved about the movie is that we just regularly showed it to audiences. And I, I think I was like unique among directors. Cause I was like, let's do another test screening. Let's, let's get it out there. Because I wanted to know what your uncle thinks of it. You know what I mean? Because I know yeah, yeah. the the movie isn't going to be a bunch of, uh, you know, Mike Reed and Jeff Rose just high-fiving each other in the audience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's going to be the world. And I'd rather fail privately in a small scale with, a, with you know, a bunch of people in Phoenix than yeah. publicly when the movie comes out. And it's like, oh, it 
no one liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Yeah, you want to smooth out all the bumps. I, I think that like knowing what what kind of stuff people are you know bouncing against is just gonna make it better. Yeah, um, totally. What's like the influences that you really were trying to uh, pay homage to, or you know, just kind of um, live up to when you were making Mitchells? Oh yeah, um, no, I had I had on my uh, wall like five filmmakers. Uh, I would they would be different today, I guess, but it was like um, Miyazaki, Martin Scorsese, and the Coen Brothers, Hal Ashby, who I love, um, and this uh, uh, Swedish director who I love called Lucas Moody, and it was like they just had a word bubble. Don't fuck this up. Make something that we <laughs> make something that we'd respect. So I I love all those guys, and I love like Greta Gerwig and Celine Sciamma and Sciamma. How do you say that? Do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, her mm. she's great. But uh, and and we were we were trying to one thing I got really excited about. I remember a day when I when the movie first got like the idea that I might make a movie first came. I had this day where it was like it was like I was on speed or crack. I got so excited about the I was like I was like snorting raw animation. Um, I got so excited Mainlining about the uh, animation. Yeah, just just I, I I cut up my FLCL DVD and I Ooh, snorted yeah. it. That's my <laughs> drug, baby. <laughs> I turned into the TV man. Um, I turned into Conti. I do I do understand that though. Like I feel like sometimes when you really fall in love with an idea i don't know like oh, like yeah. when i when i fall in love with some of my characters sometimes i get this rush that is really scary because <laughs> it's like i'm in love with an idea i'm in love with something that doesn't even exist that just comes from my own brain it's mm-hmm. so weird and it's like you know i don't know like what you described just kind of it's a great feeling you gotta you gotta cherish it because that, that, that doesn't come along that often for me yeah, yeah. i, I kind of just like hate everything now and so like <laughs> if i if i find something that gives me that rush, yeah it's like you know you get in your 30s you've seen everything and it's like really hard to to get excited about some shit yeah and so if whatever it is like some anime or, or a video game or something and i'm just like if it gives me if it makes me feel like i'm 14 again yeah yes i I'm like, oh, please don't like, like hold on to it desperately. I like, can't let go of this. I'll like replay a game like three times over just to like feel like I'm a kid again. Yeah, totally. No, well, and 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 I had one of those moments, and I was like, ah! and it was, I was actually, it was funny because I was, I was actually at the moment thinking about Over the Garden Wall, which I really love. Oh, yeah. But the thing I love about that is how disparate the influences are. It's yeah. like Fleischer Brothers cartoons and jazz and woodcut illustrations and all this stuff and i was like i got so excited because i was like sony doesn't have a house style it could be all the weird shit that i like and i was like it's gonna be like rod scribner drawings and it's gonna have graphic design it's gonna have like writing on the screen and i'm not gonna let anyone tell me no and yeah. it's gonna have all this crazy music that i like like the meishi and a lot of it like actually came to and it's like it's gonna look hand drawn you know, like, um, and some of it, like, we were actually able to make it come true, both through mm-hmm. Chris and Phil. It's like, uh, you know, sort of the trust that the studio had in those guys to, you know, because it really felt like, it really felt like what Guillermo Martinez, who was like my total genius head of story, he's like, well, was like, he's like, this is like a, <laughs> is this is like a bunch of film dude hijacked a major budget animated movie <laughs> and are just <laughs> running wild. <laughs> And like I think like at the movie's best, it sort of has that like kind of joyous, chaotic energy mm-hmm. of of somebody just doing all the stuff that we've always wanted to do. And like we have like James Terrell installations as like the inspiration for like these, you know, the robot world and and we, we were really trying to and, and Lindsay, our production designer, took all this like photography like William Eggleston and Sam Stein and a bunch of people who she really loved and was like, okay, I'm going to draw from all these cool photographers. And we just wanted to draw like influences and like, and like graphic design and weirdo teenage drawings and, and put it all in the stew because especially animation, it's like animated movies look really beautiful, but nobody notices anymore because it's like, they've just, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what they look like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're, They're beautiful masterpieces, whatever. And like I, I, I do think that like to make people remember how amazing this stuff is, you have to do something new. So we wanted to draw from all these crazy influences and put them in a blender. And I'm so excited. And and the movie, just visually, is is so much better looking than I ever. Did. 
imagine. <laughs> like, I really did great. not yeah. think it would look saw, that good. That tra- I saw that trailer and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Somebody's doing it before I knew you. Yeah, I remember I remember I was at Sony when I saw like it was during one of those like uh town hall meetings or Oh yeah, happy call, hours, you yeah. know. Happy hours and I was just like I was like, Oh wow, like like yeah, I've never seen anything look like this before. Or like or maybe at best in like an in like um festivals, you know, mm-hmm, when you mm-hmm. have like shorts that kinda try to push like C G. Yeah. But yeah, like seeing it made like in the feature suit, I was like, oh, man, that is so inspiring. That is so great. Well, and it, and it's, it was so cool because it's, like, it's really, like, been wonderful working with Chris and Phil because they're, like, you know, my, like, heroes. And they're like, yeah. hey, can we executive produce your movie? I was like, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> Chris and <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Got to play it cool. So, um, and it's so funny because, like, they were, like, at a certain point, because we pushed, because I, you know, one thing about making your first anime movie, you can be really timid because you don't know like, what are the rules, you know? And we thought yeah. we were really pushing the look and like getting wild with it, and then they were like, ah, I don't know, this looks okay, but like, how can it look more like the stuff you guys love? Look, look, you've got all this art on the wall that's great, and this is not as great as that. Make it as great as that. You can do it. Bye. And then they, no. you know, they like left to make Spider Verse. Um, and it was so, it was so awesome to have that, to have that, like both, you know, sometimes because it was so, uh, so often in the process, I was like, oh, you know, ugh. I mean, you know, it's fine by me, but Chris and Phil, man, oh boy, they really got me in a corner on this one. <laughs> but it was like what I wanted to do anyway. So they were, we were able to really push the look extra because they sort of put their might behind it. And then also, then Spider Verse came out and it was like, oh great, people love it. Yeah, it was validated. Go, go wild. I think that's that's what's kind of funny is that like from uh, my you know my audience perspective it's like Spider Verse came out and did well and then Mitchell's had its trailer and everything and it's like ah oh, I see it's like a response to, like Spider Verse must have inspired that but like clearly those things are happening you know like your movie was pro- was definitely being made before Spider Verse had come out and so yeah there, all these things were already just kind of happening organically within Sony yeah but it it, it was cool that. I mean, that's why I was buying 30 tickets to Spider-Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, right. Because I wanted it to be this mega hit to then, like, give us a blank check. And, you know, we, we did great. So the, the, it wasn't, you know. And Spider, Spider-Verse did, did great, you know. But um, but it's like um, the thing, the thing, but it did really embolden everyone at the studio to be like, oh, this is, people are loving. Great. You know, because I think, you know, anything new, people are like. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very impressive because, yeah, there's just not many original movies coming out and definitely not ones that look that distinct. And you can really see the the combination of all the things you've mentioned. Like, it, yeah. you can feel it. Well, and, and, the, 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 and the other thing that's, like, so awesome about Feature is that the, like, collaboration is so real between artists because, it, like, none of the artists, especially me, on the crew could have made that movie, but together we all made it, you know, like if it wasn't for Lindsay Oliver's super charming drawings and Dave Bleich's color script and, you know, Toby Wilson, our art director who like knew how to do everything, <laughs> and like shepherded yeah. the, ch- the group of children that he'd inherited, you know? Um, and like, uh, you know, all these people, like sort of everyone was able to sort of stack on top of each other. And because of it, it was this really joyous experience. Like going to those art reviews was always like a blast because mm-hmm. it was just a bunch of people, you know, leaving Christmas presents under the tree. That's something that I've like also learned about recently is that it's like, use your friends. <laughs> like you have, <laughs> if, if you're lucky to have talented friends around you, like use them, like work with them, collab with them and like make stuff together. Like I know I... I like that you were saying that, you know, you were just asking these friends to help out. To, like, mm-hmm. you knew these friends were better at their craft mm-hmm. and you wanted their contributions. And so it's like, yeah, just like buy your friend dinner, buy your friend a PS4 or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, just... no, I totally. I mean, that's like part of the blowing smoke up your ass thing because it's yeah, like oh, yeah. you're, you're all you're just like giving each other a boost. And then it's like, hey, man, I'll give you a boost when you need it. You know, like it it it, it really, you know, I sometimes my wife is like, you're so like you never are jealous of any of your friends. And I was like, why would I'm like, that's, that's a party, man. If somebody else gets a show, I'm like high fiving them because they're moving up and I'm their friend and we're all moving up together, you know, like definitely that's true. 
But yeah, That's very true. When when one of when one of us wins, we all win. Absolutely. Yeah, and you never know. Like, I mean, it's not like you should bank on it, but like, you never know who, which of your friends are also gonna suddenly like shoot up. So it's just like, just be cool. Just yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah. Be, just, be, a good, just be a good person, and like, don't <laughs> yeah. don't pick favorites, and like, don't try to figure out who's gonna be. There's definitely like people who are who are gonna try to uh, do the math of like which one of these people is, is, gonna, <laughs> is gonna is gonna is gonna make it, you know? Yeah. And then that's disingenuine, and that quickly gets. Yeah, that that would never work for me. Nobody, <laughs> like nobody would ever be like, this is the guy that's gonna make it, the one that's struggling and sweating in the corner. I feel the uh, opposite because everyone was so like this this guy, man, this guy's gonna make it, and I'm always just like, please don't put that kind of pressure on. Me. Like I don't I don't want to be the guy. I want to just like make the stuff I want to make i don't <laughs> yeah and th- i think that's the attitude it's just like make make your thing but yeah i mean i think your influences definitely come through in uh in mitchell i can't wait i mean by the time this is released the movies come out and but i i haven't seen it yet and uh, yeah i wish you i wish you guys had it's 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 um it's a uh i i i because like people are like oh man with the pandemic you must uh it must be hard to not have a premiere and stuff and then, like that stuff definitely sucks but like in my head, the worst case scenario was that I would have worked uh, five or six years on a movie that I am not proud of, and I would have right. let the entire crew down. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like all these talented people are just like worked on a uh, kingdom of sand that I'm mm. that <laughs> I'm responsible for. But I'm like, I'm just like, hey man, I'm proud of the movie. All the artists are proud of the movie. I'm like, we already won, man. Um, yeah, like like I I I hope that it really does well, but I I'm sort of like. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. You know what? Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna record this as if I uh, have seen it already. <laughs> wow, yeah. is, man, that was a great film. I love it. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll edit out me saying that I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> but uh, what, how do you? I mean, I'm sure there's been moments in your in your life where you've been where you've been blocked. You've had the, yes. the creative block, and. Uh, you talked about it a little bit, but how do you work through those moments? What helps you kind of get out of there? I mean, you you know, you said like you, you went to Boston for a bit to kind of mm-hmm. uh, refresh your head, but what helps you get through those moments? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're, they're numerous. You know, it, it happens all the time. It's so easy to lose your confidence. You know, you yeah. could have made a hundred great things, and then the hundred and one, you're like, yeah, definitely. You know, like <laughs> I, I nothing I ever did was good, and, and this is. Like I often I've talked about it before, but it's like, it's like, you know, those lenticular images that if you look at them one way, you're like, oh, it's a flower. And if you look at them another way, it's like, oh, it's a, a closed flower or something. Mm-hmm. You know, those like mm-hmm. it's like they're like plastic mm-hmm. and you could run your fingers yeah. up and down. Yes. 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 Anyway, uh, I often think your life is like that a little bit where it's like in one way I could look at my life and be like, oh, um, you know, everything has gone well and I worked on this show that people like and now I'm directing this movie and then you could look at another way and be like oh remember all the things that you failed at and it's so easy to fall into that thinking where it's like yeah. I failed at the Pixar internship I failed at uh, you know my second year film was a disaster this short my, my parents didn't like oh god <laughs> but, I, but I also think it's like my solution and it's it's unique to me I think because I'm like this relentless positivity monster <laughs> um, <laughs> but like uh I, I just try to, it's like, do a couple things. One is just, like, take a break. Two is, uh, this is like a rolled doll thing, which is, like, try to stop when you're doing well for the day. Like, if you're mm-hmm. doing something you're really jamming on, stop before you run out of gas. That's and really then the good. next morning, you're going to be, like, psyched because you're like, oh, man, I was on this hot streak. Bing, bang, boom. You know, um, which is I found is, like, incredibly effective. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, but that's mm-hmm. that's only if you're on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's not that's not something anybody has said yet. But that's you, yeah, like that's totally something that I've tried to do as I've gotten older. Is like I'll I'll almost sometimes try. You know how like the 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 urge is like when you finish something, you're like it's finished, and there's like a point where you can walk away from it. Yeah, and I found that like when I when I finish a thing and I walk away from it, coming back to it's so much harder because it's like starting. New, yeah you know it's like totally you have to do yeah next section and so yeah mm-hmm. I'll, like that's a good that's a good bit of advice like start the next bit even if it's just a little bit so you can kind of like 
uh, come back to something that's already in progress that you yeah. feel good about, and uh, that helps. That's great. That's a great bit of advice. Oh, I have one more that I that is I'm super excited about. I, I would always tell my I would like beat this into my students' head when I was a teacher. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, I don't <laughs> care, but so hopefully someone will. I do this thing every morning. I write a checklist of all the things I have to do, and I mm. break them up into the smallest increments humanly possible. Like Ooh. I have a ridiculous amount of checks on my little check. But they're broken into such small pieces that they all seem very doable. And mm-hmm. so I'll start doing them from easiest to hardest. And I find that, like, like for example, if I have to write 10 pages of a script, yeah, I will write 10 check marks. And if I write one page, I'm able to put a check box down. And then when I look down at the check box, be like, I've already got one done out of these nine. I'm fucking killing it. You know, <laughs> and, then, and then, like, if I get five done, I'm like, well, I might as well finish. I'm almost at 10. You know, um, and it feels like because instead of like looking at it like I only finished nine pages I've lost today because I didn't get done the ten pages I was supposed to get done. But if you look at it like I got nine out of ten pages done. Wow, that was pretty good. You know what? Maybe I could finish that tenth one. Like yeah. breaking things into the smallest possible increments gives you momentum and also you start on the easiest things that seem the least because there's so much of about making creative work that is reliant on fear of starting mm-hmm. that and, is if, so true. and if you can Absolutely. blow past that and just be like look all i have to do is write an email i could do that bing bang boom done and then i'm like i'm already written yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like cheating yourself but it, i found that it really worked it was like it was the only way i was able ever able to get anything done when i didn't have a deadline i feel like i really feel this because i feel like this is something not only that i see a lot in like bullet journaling or like because i i often (laughs) this is something i google at least like once a month uh, (laughs) to be more productive (laughs) you're googling that (laughs) yeah dude i'm yeah dude i'm a robot this is my life is not optimized Uh, increase yeah increase productivity (laughs) but for real no this is like a real like a like an advice that i see all the time like all the time is and and when i'm storyboarding that's also what i do is like i'm like all right how much time do i have and then uh, to like turn in this board and then i'm like i'm gonna break it down in like the amount of days by the amount of pages Mm -hmm. and then each page i'm like like I can get like this page done by like the end of the day. And then like, I'm like, all right. And in the morning I do all my thumbs. And then in the afternoon, yeah. I do all my, like, I don't know, like having like this structure yeah. is so helpful because yeah. it's, like, it helps you keep track of like how well you're doing while also being manageable. Like, I don't know, like, yeah. like I, I always, obviously, you know, like that's the first thing for me to check. Is this possible or not? And then yeah. I break it down and I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally possible. Mm-hmm. And then, it's a lot easier to get the work done for sure. Yeah. Cause yeah. otherwise you'll just fall into like the thing that I did in college, which is just like, if you think of it as one big chunk, you'll yeah. be like, Oh, I'm not going to work on it. I'm not going to work on it. Oh, I have to do three days worth of work in, in 24 hours. And why did I fail? That's so weird. <laughs> like mm-hmm. you always fail. If you try to do that. Well, we have some questions from our uh, fans on Twitter. I love it. Bring it. <laughs> Woo! A lot of, a lot of good questions. <laughs> Uh, let's kick it off with your boy Alex, oh, Alex sure. Hirsch himself. And this yeah. question is is uh, this is a loaded question. Which type of fast food were you eating when you wrote your favorite scene ever, so that <laughs> kids can gain your power? <laughs> um, Alex knows me well and knows that I'm a monster that eats fast food constantly. Um, <laughs> and most of my uh, stories involve like. And then I bought four chicken uh, <laughs> McChickens and it downed them all and started sobbing or whatever. Um, yeah. but, uh, for the best the fast food that I was eating when I wrote the best, scene. I'm just trying to think of the best scene that I've ever written. seems like he had something in mind. I think, I think it's probably, I think probably some of the emotional stuff in the movie is probably the best stuff I've written. Okay. And I would say during this movie, the fast food that I ate the most was Del Taco. So mm-hmm. I would say probably eating a, uh, Del Taco, soft taco with um, just chicken, lettuce, and cheese, and some Del Scorcho sauce. You hear that, everyone? That's what you gotta eat to write to write that those good scenes. That's the secret sauce. Let's see. 
And that's actually a good uh, segue. You're talking about, you know, the scenes with um, with the family mm-hmm. uh, from at C. Wong fourteen twelve. How is this movie similar to your family? Oh yeah, hugely. I mean, I yeah. should have <laughs> I should have said that. I skipped the whole part where I like pro- promote the movie. But I think if anyone is hearing this, they're gonna like, talking about they're it. gonna like know what the movie. Is. But yeah, no, it's it's hugely based on my uh, family. My dad. The main character is this nature loving man named Rick Mitchell, and my dad looks exactly like him. He's designed. I just gave Lindsay Olivares a picture of him, and she drew this, and I was like, "This is perfect." <laughs> and uh, the story I always tell about my dad that was deemed too insane for the movie. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> is is and the movie is crazy. There's a giant screaming Furby. Um. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Is w- one morning he woke me up at five in the morning. He's like, "Mike, wake up!" It's very indicative of. And this is why I made a movie about him. Um, he woke me up at five in the morning. He's like, Mike, wake up. We, 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 we got to build a bathtub in the, in the woods so we could legally be naked in nature. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was like, Jesus. what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, I was like, it's five in the morning. It's a Saturday. You know, I'm 24. Why am I at home? This is like and a then, Rick and Morty setup. Yeah, right? no, totally. It really is. And then my mom, Morty. Yells, my mom yells in the next room. It's like, he saw it on a Viagra commercial. And then my dad's like, that's not important. That's not important. I, I, it was a, a Seattle's commercial. But anyway, anyway, anyway. we're going to build this bathtub. It's going to be great. And the funny, and everyone thought he was an idiot. And, uh, and he, like, drained my family's bank account to make this these outdoor bathtubs. But the funny thing about him is anyone who's ever seen the outdoor bathtub, I'm like, look at these dumb things. And they're like, Mike, these are incredible. This man is a genius. <laughs> this man is a genius. <laughs> And it really was like in that moment, I understood that how me and my dad are the same, even though like we don't like any of the same stuff. Like he loves hunting and mm-hmm. I like cartoons, but like he's equally psychotically passionate about insane stuff. <laughs> like he's psychotically passionate about building bathtubs in the woods and I'm psychotically passionate about making cartoons and like nothing, no reason or logic can stop us when we have an idea in our head. Um, so so it's it's very based on my family and it's it's also based on that realization that like that you know I sort of as a teenager uh, and uh, the Linda the mom is based on my mom and my aunts who are these like you know would do anything for their family and Katie's kind of based on me and kind of based, based on my sister and Aaron is sort of based on me and Jeff um because mm-hmm. we're obsessive little kids um but yeah basically it's sort of like I learned over the course of growing up and stuff that um just sort of how even though my dad sort of appeared like a goober sometimes to me as a teenager thinking I was really cool he like did all this stuff for me you know and it's like it just really made me think about and and that sort of thing and that was sort of like one of the inspirations for the whole movie yeah there's a scene uh in the trailer and I guess it's in the movie too where uh is it um Aaron that's the the song? yeah uh, where he's like crossing out names in a phone book and like calling them. And yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Isn't, isn't that something that you did? You said yes. That is, I I used to call. Well, and and it's sort of like Jeff was like this too, but but I was referencing that because I, I wrote that part uh, and it like went insanely viral on Twitter, which is insane. Yeah, it was just this weird moment in the trailer. Um, but uh, but I was just this like little dorky kid who would call the electronics boutique like ten times a day. And I just wanted to talk to them about Dreamcast games. Ah. <laughs> and I'd be like, um, uh, you know, have you ever played Bangai O? And the guy's like, dude, I've got to work. Like, Man. I can't <laughs> talk to you. Like, Bangai O, what a, a re- what a It's what a, a treasure reference. game. It's like um kind of like a bullet hell shooter. And he's like, I kid, I have to go. <laughs> Man. They, they loved you. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I, I will say later in my life they would they were like, anyway, whatever. Um, but yeah, and like we were a little, uh, I was a little obsessive kid, so it, 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 I relate to, I relate to Aaron. I just, I respect the reference to Bungai. Oh. <laughs> it's a fucking sick um, game, man. I haven't, he- I haven't heard of that, that in, right. in a long time. It's, uh, it's tough, man. Uh, from at Squid sixty four R, what inspired the style of Mitchell's versus the Machines? I love how the style is very different from most computer animation. Yeah, films. I mean, it, it's, it's. I mean, the great thing about it is that it. I used to read all these um, Pixar books and, and they would always have these grand unifying theories. And I kind of always thought that they were like reverse engineered BS. <laughs> I was like, they didn't think about that. That's stupid. But I realized in making a movie, like you can't not have a grand unified theory because there's so many decisions to make in these movies. 
And like, if you don't have a theory, your movie's gonna look fucking insane. So I uh, basically yeah. our theory was like, one, I really loved Lindsay Oliver's drawings and the drawings of a lot of uh, the artists on the movie. But two, it was like the movie is about like imperfect people, and we wanted the art to like reflect that. So we wanted it to look hand drawn and and like so you could see. And it's because it's about people versus robots. We wanted to like see the hand of a human in all of the human stuff. You know, um, and we also okay, wanted the the okay, characters yeah. are full of flaws, and that's a big part of the movie. And we wanted to see those flaws, and we wanted to see that their houses looked like your cousin's house growing up. It didn't look like a model home that is in like you know a uh, Nancy Myers movie or whatever. And like so, like so, basically, so that was like for the human side of things, we wanted to push things to be really handmade, ma- making it feel like it's an illustration. And then for the robot stuff, on the other side of things, one of our artists, Arthur Fong, who is like a really brilliant uh, production designer in his own right, sort of his first week, it was funny, like he started the same week that a bunch of other artists started. And the other artists like did like 10 paintings a piece and they're like all amazing. Like the art team is like fucking stacked in this movie. But Arthur just did a collage and he just like collaged like all of our human world stuff versus these like James Terrell installations. And we're like, this is it! And all the artists were like, fuck you, Arthur. <laughs> you just made a collage. <laughs> but we got so excited because it was like, oh, this could be the theory. It's like we have earth tones in our human world and the in the robot world, it's like stark, bold colors and straight lines and everything looks like 2001. Um, so those were like our two poles. And like with the cliche innovation observation pyramid, I wanted to push all the human stuff to be really absurd and i wanted to push the uh robot stuff to be really wild and gotcha uh from at dino lich what was the transition from tv to directing an original feature like fucking rough (laughs) it was pretty rough stuff i tell you what um no because because um because the the difference between making a three minute short and making a tv show was exponential in how hard it because I thought I was like, oh, I could do a short, you know, I could do art. I did this short, but making a 22 minute TV show is so much harder than a short and making a 90 minute movie is 10 times harder than that. Like it's, it's so intense because you have to care as much, like the amount of more that you need to care about a, you know, movie than like, a you know, a sitcom or a 22 minute episode is like exponential. So you just have to dig so much deeper. And it really, every scene needs to lead to the next. There can't be any fat on it. It's all got to, like, click into place or people are going to be bored. So, I mean, it was, it was, I will say the benefit of it is that I moved really fast. Um, Because I was used to the TV cadence, I was like, I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it again. Let's try it again. Let's, let's do this. You know, like, let's edit, let's edit the scene, try it again. Let's do this version. You know, so like some feature people were like, dude, just chill out. But. But I, that did end up being a benefit, and I've also noticed, um, in my experience, oftentimes TV people are the fastest just because they're used to that crazy cadence. Mm-hmm. So they're they could bust out a scene in two days, whereas like a, somebody who's like more into feature is like used to taking a week or two weeks or whatever. So that part of it is a real benefit. But the 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 hard thing is writing was like writing it editing it, making it all work, making all the jokes land, you know, making all the emotional moments hit. Cause like we had a lot of ambition for the movie and it was like, it was hard to, you know, I had this like whiteboard in my office. And like, is it, do you love the characters? You know, is the art style using animation in new and different ways? And then one of them is like, is it the greatest animated movie of all time? <laughs> um, so we were like going for that. And we we're, I was like, it's gotta have 50 laughs. It's gotta make the audience cry, blah, 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 blah. So, and we were trying to hit, you know, these crazy targets that I set and, and, you know, God bless the artists. We all did, um, at least some of them, but yeah. So long story short, very, very hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. From at Jocko Hoffmo, do you have any advice for what to do when a project is affected by a force largely out of your control? Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is one thing that I learned making a movie and it's another thing that Chris and Phil have been really good about sort of helping us out with like is like you really have to roll with everything you know um right phil would always be like just treat it like an improv assignment you know like look you get a note what is a creative way to fix it that makes the movie better 
even if the note right even if you hate the note <laughs> like at least try it because if you try a solution that's like this is my good faith attempt at fixing this and it doesn't work then you could say like look we tried it here's the evidence this is better than this or what whatever the fuck. so it's like it's sort of when something is affected by forces whether it's a studio or whether it's like covid or whatever it's like you just got to roll with it um and be really flexible and really and 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 that's the other thing is like another sort of Chris and Phil thing that I learned is just like how fast those guys work, which I do think comes from a TV background, which is like they'd yeah. give us a hundred notes in a, an editing session. And then it was like, it was like, yeah, just try all the notes, try them. And then we had to learn that like, you could do that. And it's like, you don't end up doing like a amazing job, but you at least can try everything. And then you'll notice some things with like, this has a lot of potential. We should develop this further. Or like this idea was insane and should be burned, you know, or whatever. <laughs> um, so it's like, but it, it, it taught me a lot. And it's sort of like, now I feel like when I look at an animatic or something, I have these like goggles on that where it's like, Oh, everything can be better. All day. Uh, like even to the last minute, that was the thing that, was like so insane about those guys is like <laughs> it's like phil was in our mix and he was like to the last day like coming up with new stuff and like always on offense he was never on defense it always like made me laugh because he was always like keep pushing <laughs> and and it was always like to the, you know it's like could there be another sound effect for this this might be funnier what if the what if the sound cuts out here and it was like so exhilarating to think that like oh the movie could still get better in the I was always just like in defense mode, like don't ruin it. <laughs> but um, but he was, you know, sort of those guys both are keep keep making it better at the last minute. Yeah, I like the way you describe it. It just sounds like everyone's always like shirtless and screaming, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and, and like every at, at like every step of the way, and no matter what, it's like storyboarding. Everyone's like, ah, add more gags. I mean. A little bit. Throwing <laughs> a little potatoes. bit. I mean, hey, I, a lot of people say, uh, you know, try hard is some sort of um, insult, but I, I consider that a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, yeah, <laughs> you think the mix is just like two guys like in a room, just like, it's like dark and it's like, yeah, I think that's good. But no, in your, in your scenario, it's just like, <laughs> there are horns and. It, the movie, it was chaotic. I will say it was chaotic in 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 a in a wonderful creative way and also in ways where you're like that are like are we gonna finish on time? <laughs> but you know we always did. Yeah. Was um what stage was the movie in when uh, COVID hit? It was great. I mean, it was we because we had just finished this huge push. It, it was it was funny because it was coming and I and like one of our editors was like, hey. Uh, no, no big deal, but uh, just it'd be cool if nobody came into my editing suite. And I was like, this guy is crazy. Um, like what, Doug? <laughs> pull it together, buddy. Um, and then you know he was right. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But it was it was basically like we were we were coming up to this big deadline, and we we're like, look, we just need to push these last three days because I think things are gonna get shut down. So we pushed, and thank God we got it all done. And then, you know, and then we went home, and we all we all got in our homes. But the crazy thing was like yeah. animators were working three days later, you know, like, like the, 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 the company did a great job of getting their, their stuff. And, and yeah. at that point in the movie it wasn't like so important that we were all in the same room. So it was, it was like kind of a, you know, it was, it was surprising at how seamless it was. Yeah. Animation really in general, yeah, didn't totally. miss a beat, which is great. That's the, that's the good thing about making yeah. things on a computer. <laughs> you don't need, you don't need to be on a set. Is there what what kind of stuff do you have in mind for your for your future? Like what's what's next on your? Uh, oh yeah, hey, I got a uh, okay. Uh, Gene, you and me, we're gonna make uh, forty more climate shorts. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a job right now, so I'll do it. I mean, I am, I am, uh, I am trying to do some of that. You've been very active, yeah. You've been doing a lot of good. Yeah, I've, I'm trying, trying. Um, but um. But I'm I'm actually really excited. I, I I thought it's like having a baby. I think people people have said it's like where you're like, while we were you know uh, that we were all pregnant pregnant with the movie. <laughs> I was like never. Yeah. I will never. I'm gonna go into a cabin in the woods. I'm never gonna make anything ever again. But as you can tell by you know me all my stories or talking to me, I'm right. I'm loaded with insane energy at all times. 
And the second the movie was over, I was like, oh, what's next? So I, I'm really excited about a bunch of ideas for features. I've got this TV idea that I'm really psyched for um, that I think is like I'm not good enough to make yet. <laughs> like I need to. Mm. But the thing I'm excited about is like pushing forward because like all the animation people that I know who the movie are like, get me out of animation. I want to do features. I was like, I never want to do live action. I only want to make li- uh, oh, animation until yeah. I die. But the and I'm super excited about the kind of what I was talking about before, like the, we've did it a little bit in this movie, but like externalizing internal with like what Katie is mm. is feeling. You're seeing it on the screen. And I think there's so much opportunity with animation to use it expressively. And people have never done it before to show what's going on in someone's mind and, and sort of more deeply feeling things. Mm-hmm. And also Having a horror, like, if you had a great horror movie and you did an animation, it could be the scariest shit in the world, you know? Like, like I would just love to do different genres and and do, you know, more adult stories I w- yeah. is something I'm really excited yeah. about. And something that there's never been a better time in the history of the universe to do. Yeah, the fact that Sony has a whole slate of, like, adult it's, animated stuff is, like, awesome. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, I, I'm so stoked. I hope I can... I hope I, I just want to get on one of these projects. Get on. Ah, oh, God, if somebody <laughs> will have me. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's great. So you're you're kind of in the middle of figuring yeah. out I, I'm, what I, the next moves are. I've been bugging people who I've worked on the movie with, and they're like, "You make another movie, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm just developing something. It's no big deal. Um, uh, so I, I I am like I'm like literally actively working with something. It's uh, working on something right now. And, it's like a movie and I'm really excited about it. And I'm excited to like, I, I am really excited. The thing that I'm excited about is, is telling something with more adult themes and, and not even that's like adult, yeah. like, you know, drama from hell, you know, that it's like, it's sort of similar in tone to this movie, but you know, is like, I don't know, like, you know, like get out or something is like this awesome movie right. that, that is about something, but it's also like the most entertaining movie I saw that year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like yeah. I would love to. Yeah. Make- I think it's, there's a funny like thing. <laughs> People seem to think that movies can either be for kids yeah, or for adults totally. sometimes. And I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Cause the, the best stuff, you know, crosses that gap. Like it is entertaining to anybody. Like there's different layers yeah. to it. No, it's so. a, well, and it's like, and it's like also people think kids are fucking dummies who are just like, <laughs> Just, yeah, just that, that rolling was... around in the mud, and unless it's a, <laughs> unless it's a like you know nonverbal uh, uh, yellow pill, uh, the children won't respond to it, and it's like no man, kids yeah. are smart, you know they 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 want to be engaged on all cylinders as well, and if anything, it makes them feel cool because like when I was a kid, I was like, I watch this and I'm cool, you know, um, and it makes yeah. it makes yeah, them yeah. feel. Even if they can't tell what the joke is, like if, in my case, I knew that happened a lot. Where it's like I couldn't tell what was what was uh, adult about something, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. It's like, like you can just like, you can like you're like that's a sex <laughs> thing, isn't it? What is sex? Yeah, it's like I don't get the Spiru Agnew but joke, tell. but I'm interested in yeah. finding out what it's about. Yeah, yeah. The Spiru. <laughs> I don't get this, but it seems cool and smart. Well, great. Uh, is there anything else you want to mention while you're here? Anything you want to plug besides the movie? Actually, you know what? Plug the movie. Whatever. Why yeah, yeah. Movie? Hey, man. Mitzvahs vs. Machines. Uh, it's already out on Netflix. If you're listening to this, I'm talking all devices. I'm talking tell your friends, yeah. loved ones, yeah. everyone. Yeah, just, watch it 12 I times. I assumed everyone's going to watch it, but yeah, you're here to plug. Plug away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it, I'm really proud of it. Uh, the artists who worked on it did this incredible job, and I could, uh, I'm incredibly grateful to all of them. If I was a sculptor, I would just spend the next uh, three years carving a giant statue of all of them they're the best i look forward to watching i mean never mind uh it, it was great it was amazing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we recorded this the day that it came out <laughs> cool well thanks so much for coming on the show it was a delight you guys and i've been consistently charmed by these wonderful drawings and i'm so oh, glad yeah. i didn't have to draw. <laughs> I, I i ran out of, i ran out of steam pretty quickly i was just i was just enthralled by the conversation <laughs> As it tends to happen. V, however, goes on these insane tangents. I'm loving it. This is like of a just full, like, like this red haired girl became the you know, the star <laughs> of the show. This is like a full animation cycle. She's like fully doing a flip. You got A's. 
<laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that is the whole thing. I was just drawing fat cats. Um, <laughs> this is for whoever listening to the audio podcast. Check out our podcast on on YouTube. Yeah, there's some really cool drawings. There's some l- Lammy dance drawings. There's <laughs> Michelin yeah. Man characters of the movie. Me fighting yeah, robots. <laughs> yeah, we had some good drawing prompts. <laughs> uh, well, that's the end of this creative block. Thanks to Mike for being our guest and sharing his story. And thanks to our listeners. Follow us on Twitter. It's at Creative Block, Creative Without the Vowels, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask your guests. Huge thanks to my sister Clemens for editing the podcast. Woo. Please subscribe to the channel if you love our content. I've been your host, Gene. And that was V. Keep being creative, and we'll see you next week. Go watch Mitchell's Versus Machines. It's on Netflix. Do it. <gasps> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.